All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome. Let's go. Lesson 13 in the module one, Engage New York for Pre-Calculus. So we should be on this page over here, right? And before we could actually jump into trigonometry and the complex plane, there's a lot of pre-things that we need to go over before we even get to this part, okay? So what is the game plan for this lesson? Uh, students represent complex numbers in polar form and convert them between rectangular form and polar representations. You're thinking, what on earth are you talking about? So this won't make sense until we get to the first part of the lesson. So for the pre-lesson, the only thing we need to work on are some trigonometry reviews. So let's see. Um, what do we remember from trigonometry? These triangles we need to always remember. And if we zoom in a little bit here, that if this is 1 and this angle is 30, if we have a 30, 60, 90, we have 1, square root of 3 over 2, 1 half, square root of 2 over 2, square root of 2 over 2, 45, 45. These triangles we have to know from our trigonometry days. So please have this down and let's continue. From here, we need to also have this in our notes that what on earth is this saying? That if we have some, if we start over here, and we create some sort of rotation. Remember, we always start over here, and this is a positive rotation when we go counterclockwise, right? Some vocabulary words, we always start here, right? This is the initial ray. And where I end, that will be called the terminal ray. So if I go, let's say, 45 degrees, I'm over here. What if I go 90 degrees? Where will my terminal ray be? It'll be right here where my hand is. What if I wanted to go 180 degrees and I'm just turning this initial ray 180 degrees, yeah? And we're, this terminal ray will be here, okay? And remember the name of the circle is the unit circle and the radius of our circle is one. So the distance from here to here, the distance from here to any point on the circle is always one. And that's why we're using these triangles, because we're taking this triangle, like, imagine this. If I go 45 degrees, right, let's imagine, let me zoom out a little bit. Let's say if I go 45 degrees, then I know the distance from here to here has to be square root of 2 over 2, and the distance from here to here has to be square root of 2 over 2. What if I go 30 degrees, right? If I go 30 degrees, then I'm using this triangle, and then I know my length from here to here will be the same length as this, which is square root of 3 over 2, and what will my height be? It'll be a half, and always my radius is 1. And when we talk about the rotation, right, this is called theta, right? When we, whenever we talk about degrees in rotation in the coordinate plane, we're calling the degree of rotation theta. So this symbol theta means how much you're rotating. Okie dokie, okie dokie. So, some things to remember. Um, the sine always represents the y value and the cosine represents the x value. So let's say if I go, let's say if I rotate, I don't know, 30 degrees, right? If I rotate 30 degrees, then this point over here, which triangle did I make? I made this triangle, right? This is, I rotated 30 degrees. So I know this has to be square root of 3 over 2, and this has to be a half. But then notice that this point over here, the x position of my point will be square root of 3 over 2, because I'm going square root of 3 over 2 here. This point over here has to be uh, square root of 3 over 2 comma 0. And the y position over here has to be a half, like I am going one half up here, okay? And um, always remember that my cosine represents my x value and my sine represents the y value. And one thing that we need to remember is, we'll get back to this, about notice here, what is my sine value in this quadrant if we have quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three, quadrant four, our sine value is positive and my cosine value is also positive. So we'll come back to this in a little while once we do some examples. So if I were to say, hey, find sine of 30 degrees, well, what do we do? We need to rotate 
Imagine we start here, right? Remember, this is uh, the initial ray. Initial ray is here, and we're going to just go 30 degrees here, and we're just gonna say this is 30 degrees, right? And what's the name of this? It's gonna be called our terminal ray, right? And this is our initial ray, and we have the unit circle here, right? So that's a terrible looking circle, but the idea should be clear that if this is 30 degrees, remember sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, right? So let me just actually draw a triangle here so that if this is our triangle, right? This is my theta. This is the degree of rotation. This will be my hypotenuse. This will be my opposite. And this will be my adjacent with respect to the theta. So sine of theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. Well, here, if I have a 30 degree rotation, I'm using which one of these triangles? I'm using this one, right? So I know this has to be a half, this has to be square root of three over two, and this has to be one. So then what is opposite sine is what? Opposite over hypotenuse. What is my opposite of the 30? It's one half. What's my hypotenuse? My hypotenuse is one. So it's just one half over one, and that just equals one half. So the sine of 30 degrees is just one half. What about cosine of 30 degrees? Well, cosine of 30, um, what will cosine be? Cosine of theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. So here, what is my adjacent of the 30 degrees? The adjacent is square root of three over two. And what is my hypotenuse? My hypotenuse is one. So what is square root of three over two divided by one? Anything divided by one is just the same thing. So it's just square root of three over two. And that's what we have here. Cosine 30 degrees is square root of three over two. And notice that my x values here, when we talk about the positives here, my x values are positive and my y values are positive. So here, cosine and cosine are positive over here. So my answers remain positive. Okie dokie. Let's do another one. What if I were to say sine of 120 degrees? Well, how do we do that? Here, we need to make, remember, when we start here is zero degrees. This is 90 degrees. This is 180 degrees. This is 270 degrees. Here, again, we have the initial ray, right? We start here. Okay, and we're gonna go 120 degrees. If we go 120 degrees, in which quadrant will we be in? We better be in quadrant two, right? Because 120 is between 90 and 180, so I know I'm going to be, I'm gonna be a little bit closer to the 90. I'm not like, my ray shouldn't be over here. And again, let's just remember vocabulary words. This is my initial ray, right? and then this will be my terminal ray, okay? So I know that my theta is 120 degrees. Remember, theta represents your degree in rotation. It's how much you're rotating around the circle. So if this is 120 degrees, how do I find the sine of 120 degrees? How do I find this position over here? Well, what we could do is we could make this triangle, right? Because that's what we're studying in trigonometry, we're studying triangles. So if we know this is 120 degrees, we need to recall back from some basic geometry that if we have a line, the rotation, this has to be 180 degrees, right? If this is 100, for example, like if this is, if this is uh, 120 degrees here, how much more left to get to the 180? This has to be 60 degrees over here. And the symbol and notation we use for this, if theta is the degree of rotation, we call phi our reference angle. This is what's left of that rotation. And here, if this is 60 and this is 90, then this has to be 30. And then we just have to go back to our triangles which triangle are we using? We're using the 60, 30, 90, right? We're just taking this and we're kind of flipping the triangle, right? So what's opposite of the 60, right? If I'm here, opposite of 60, opposite of 60, this has to be square root of three over two. What is 
adjacent, this has to be a half. Okay, so now that we know these two numbers here, what is sine? Sine is what? Sine of 120 degrees is opposite over hypotenuse. And what is opposite of this 60 degrees? It's square root of 3 over 2 divided by 1. And that's equal to square root of 3 over 2. Okay, but now you have to ask yourself positive or negative, right? And remember that I showed you that sine represents our y value. So here, when we're thinking about y, what are my values for y here? This is 1, this is 2, this is 3. These are all positive values for y. So here, if I am uh, above the x-axis here, my sine has to be positive. Okay? What about cosine? Cosine, it represents my x value. And here, if I go this way, this is, this is negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. So I already know my cosine has to be negative. What about here, my sine? Will it be positive or negative, right? Here, remember, this is negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. So the y values below here, they're all negative. So then this has to be negative. And look at my cosine. My cosine is to the left. Anything to the left of the y-axis has to be negative. What about here? Sine here is below the x-axis, so this is negative. But let's look at the cosine. Cosine here, it's 1, 2, 3. This is positive. Okay? So please have this in your notes, that sine, is, sine and cosine are positive here. They're negative, negative here. Positive, negative, negative, positive. Okay, this is very important to have in our notes. So when we go back to this, look, our sine, when we're in this area, I already know my sine is positive, and my cosine, for whatever I get, has to be negative. So let's see, what is cosine of 120? Cosine of 120 is equal to what? It's adjacent over hypotenuse. But what's my adjacent? It's 1 half. And what's my hypotenuse? Remember, that's 1, so this is just 1 half. But remember, cosine is negative in this location, so it has to be negative 1 half. And this has to be what? Uh, yeah, square root of 3 over 2. Okie dokie. Okie dokie. Let's try and do another one. Last one, and then you could do some examples on your own. Sine of 240, cosine 240. Okay, well, what's our first move? We have to do rotation, right? And remember, this is 0 degrees, 90 degrees, 180 degrees, and 270 degrees, right? 240 has to be between 180 and 270. So I know I'm going to rotate, and I have to be somewhere over here. So I'm going to be like right over here, right? And again, let's just remember vocabulary words. Remember, initial ray is here. My terminal ray, boom, this is my terminal ray, okay? And now here, what's my theta? What does theta equal here? My theta is the amount of rotation. So this is 240. I know that from here to here, we did 240 degree rotation. But that symbol that we use is theta. What will our phi be? What's left over? If this is 240, right? Oh, wait, wait, wait. I don't want to. I'm sorry. Our, I don't want to say what's left over because what's left over is 30. But what we're going to do is, if this is 240, right, what do I want to do? I want to make a triangle from here to the x-axis, okay? So if I make a triangle from here to the x-axis, if I know here to here is 240 and here is 180, what's between, sorry, what's between the 240 and the 180? This has to be 60. So again, we're using that 60 triangle. We're not using 30 degrees here. We're using, okay, so maybe what I'll do is I'm gonna pause the video and write a little definition on uh, a reference angle. Okay, one second, let me, let me get a definition. Here, we're talking about the reference angle, and this is a great definition, just keep it simple. The angle between the terminal ray and the x-axis is your reference angle. So here, if this is my terminal ray, right, and this is my x-axis, 
the reference angle is between the terminal ray and the x-axis. So this angle has to be 60. Okay. And now let's just use our triangle. Here we're using the 60, 30, 90 triangle. So then what's adjacent to the 60, right? If this is 60, this has to be a half and this has to be square root of 3 over 2. So here, what's opposite, it'll be square root of 3 over 2, and this will be 1 half. But always remember that our sine and our cosine in quadrant 3 will be negative and negative. So this is negative square root of 3 over 2 and negative 1 half. Okie dokie. Okie dokie. So what I'd like you to do is pat on the shoulder, very nice, or pat on your hand. Uh, here, I want you to calculate all of these, okay? You have to get good at going around the circle, okay? If I have my circle, you have to be able to calculate every single one of these angles before we could actually move on to the lesson, okay? And this is all Algebra 2. We did this last year, okay? Enjoy.